Welcome back to another episode of the Sit Down Talk. My name is Kier. And I'm Noemi. And we welcome you. Clap it up for you for being here today. Yeah, boy. <laughs> if this is your first time here, welcome. Make sure you go and binge all of our former vlogs. It's a good watch. You're going to have a good time watching us. But if you are a group of people that we call the repeat offenders. Wait, we didn't even say if you're listening. If you're watching. Because we do the podcast intro different. Oh, my bad. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> the Sit Down Talk is now officially a podcast streaming on all platforms. So make sure that you hit the links down below and you can hear us no matter where you go. We're always following you. Dang. Emails. Which is funny because the topic of today is actually communication, but I don't want to jump the gun. <laughs> Usually we hug the uh, repeat offenders, but I've been editing a vlog and I see you always look uncomfortable. So how about this? We're going to give them one of these. Jokes. No, yeah. let's hug. You let's sure? Hug. Yeah, let's right, hug. I'm on, smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we can't stop the hug. Like, it's a thing. What you happened? just took my wallet? They took my wallet. Who took your wallet? The repeat offenders. <laughs> this is why I hate the hug. Because you always make it weird. It can't just yeah, be a hug. Yeah, you always make it weird. No, you care. Oh, me? <laughs> Impossible. So today, our conversation is really around a reflection that she and I had about open dialogue and what that means. If you're on these here internets, you done heard people say communication is key a million times but communication is just a word it doesn't really spell out what that means or what it looks like on a daily basis mm -hmm. or even like how to do that in your own life because everybody doesn't communicate the same way and everyone doesn't receive communication the same way and one thing that we talked about was uh being honest and vulnerable about what I could improve on or what mm -hmm. we both could improve on in our relationships. Mm -hmm. I think you brought up the topic originally, but when I was thinking about it, it was like a lot of times we're in relationships, whether it's friendships, romantic relationships, marriages, whatever. And we're in these relationships with this thing in our head about the the things that we need, we can improve on, the things mm -hmm. that we can do better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I've noticed that those things are more internal than they are like things that our partner told us about. One, because that's an uncomfortable conversation to begin with. Like, hey, guy, you're not doing this right. And two, just that criticism isn't something that's always welcome. What if we had the conversation about what we can improve on with our partner so that they can tell us, yeah, you know, you might want to fix that. Tighten up a little or, bit. Or, nah, I don't even know what you're talking about. You tripping, bruv. You know, and I think that conversation, of course, goes in line with communication, but I think it's also just like having a, I guess, not more realistic, but having a more direct or truthful, honest, that's not the word, but like, Making sure that what you're doing makes sense for your relationship. Yeah, making sure that you're not just moving in a direction that isn't really going to yield anything for you all. She and that I... That was a therapist. She, she and I had a conversation one time, and I was talking about what I could do to be better. I'm like, man, I need to tighten up on these things. And she looked at me and was like, I, do you feel that way? Because I don't feel that way. And I realized in that moment that the problem that I had was something that I ruminated on in my own brain, but I never really shared it with her and verify whether or not it was ever a problem for her. Mm -hmm. So I was creating a problem that wasn't a problem anywhere outside my own mind. How did you feel when I was just like, nah, like that? that's not an issue that I thought you needed to work on. I think in that moment, I felt like, well, if I'm making these issues that aren't issues, mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. in this instance, maybe I'm doing it in other places too. Oh. So we decided. <laughs> no, that was, that's uh -oh, that, real That shit. sounded like the, uh, how they say people be on a podcast. No, or like, like oh, mm -hmm. but it's the way that you said, you said I'm making issues. I don't know. You, you said issues in three different ways. Three different times in the same sentence, but I knew exactly what you was talking yeah, about. Yeah, ma'am. I love that. I'm, I'm making things a problem when they don't have to yeah. be. So And you internalized it, clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's not like we all just feel so free to share everything we feel that we can improve upon with our partners. It's just so funny because you brought that up and I don't remember that conversation. I mean, I remember it vaguely, but I do remember it feeling like a profound moment in our relationship. And I'm surprised we never revisited that before this. 
like before this sit down talk. Yeah. Like we never sat down and be like, okay, well this happened. What else could we be making into issues in our minds without kind of checking in with our partner? I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed that like we're just now having that conversation. It's so much stuff. A relationship ain't just the love that y'all share between each other. It's also all the stuff. How many things did we discuss this week? How many hard conversations oh did we God. have this week that so ain't got many. nothing to do with us? So many. Yeah. Yeah. Getting back to us is usually like the last thing on the list. I feel like we unfairly blame people sometimes for how an individual or how collectively the marriage comes last. And we don't always blame the circumstances and yeah. the logistics and all the stuff. Um, and we got a lot of stuff. We got so, a lot of stuff. So we came up with this exercise that, I mean, this is going to be our little marriage check-in. Yeah. Kira but, came up with it. I was just on board. I'm going to give you credit. <laughs> Appreciate it. This is our little marriage check-in that we just going to do on on camera because I thought it'd be a dope exercise to just name three things that we both individually feel that we could improve on and see whether or not it's even an issue for the other person. Yeah. Okay, can I be super transparent? What's up? So, like, we knew that this topic was going to come up, and, you know, we gave each other space and time to think about three things. I'm not going to speak for you, but for me, it was really hard to pick three things. Nah, it was kind of hard for me, too. Yeah, why yeah. was it hard for you? It was hard because I, I, f I feel like I do a lot of those things. I just want to improve on them. So, it's not things that I completely neglect or yeah. things that I always overlook. It's just things that I feel like I can do better in. Same. Yeah. Same. I think like, you know, I say a lot about how I'm in a place where I'm in therapy. I mean, I'm, st I'm still in therapy and I'm doing the work and I'm not just doing the work on myself. I'm doing the work in my marriage as well. So, you know, just thinking about this, it, like you said, it wasn't necessarily things that, like I knew I wasn't doing that I should do. It's things that I'm actively working on that, I know that I need more work in doing. And well, I think because once I share them with you, I don't you know if it's actually going to be a thing. Yeah, and I, I keep it a buck with you but in my response. But also, it can be a little... My bias won't always allow me to see that I need improvement in the space that I'm already trying hard to be better at. Yeah. You know, if I came into hard. this relationship at a negative two with this thing and now I'm at a one... To me, that one feeling like a 30 today, boss. You know, it. I, I feel Oof. like it just it has more weight. But also, my mind tricks me into believing that maybe I'm better at this thing than I actually am because yeah. I have come so far. I know we were in the middle of a conversation, but we had to switch our mics real quick. We were having some technical difficulties. So if you are on YouTube and we look different now, we just... We just moved the mics. Yeah, we had to do some stuff. I don't remember what we were talking about, though. We Oh, I know where we left off. We were talking about oh, how you... We was like, I got three things. I'm like, you got three things? Oh, I yeah, I got, got two. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, well, since you have two, why don't we start with yours? And then maybe as you're talking, I will find one. So my first thing is, one thing that I can do, that I can improve on is not guessing for you. So there are things that you do that you don't mind that I would hate if I had to do. And it's hard for me to ask you to do those things. Or if I know you have to do those things, like even some things with the kids. If I'm with the kids, I need to go out. We need to be outside. We need to be doing stuff. I can't sit in the house with my kids. They will drive me crazy. I, I'll end up yelling. I'll end up being irritable. I'll end up being that dad I do not yeah, want to be. True. And sometimes I got things to do. And knowing you'll be like, I'll just watch the kids. I'm like, you sure? She'll be like, yeah. I'm like, well, I'll just do this, this. She says, no, I got it. Okay, well, let me take care of this before, babe, like, I got it. Don't worry about it. Or I just won't go at all mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I hate watching them in the house. Or if I have to be with them all day, I have to put my mind in a certain place. That's just that's just not your reality. You don't trip off of that. Not, and I'm the opposite. Like, I'm most comfortable and at ease when they're home. Oh, because I don't ever take See, them out. That's such a brain thing with me. Because yeah. even our manager, she be answering emails and doing logistics. I hate answering like, emails. Ugh, I'm never gonna I email hate her. Doing about logistics, it. I'm like, ugh. And she just she loves it. Yeah. But my mind can't process sometimes when people absolutely love doing something that I absolutely hate. So sometimes I end up thinking for you and being like, yeah. Nah, she ain't gonna, yeah. she ain't gonna want to do that. I'm gonna just go ahead and do it myself. Yeah. Is it accurate or is it not? That is accurate, but it only became a thing for me, like real talk, recently. True, man. When we had the conversation about like driving the kids back and forth, and you were just like, 
you know, you hate it and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no. No, nah, I said it feels like it's a lot. Yeah, Our feels, kids' school yeah. is like an hour away from my house and the commute is ridiculous. It's a whole yeah. thing, but... It, it is a whole thing. And I've taken on the responsibility of picking them up and dropping them off the majority of the time. Which I hate because yeah. we split those duties our entire time together as parents. Yeah. But now because of the dynamics of the house... If I don't have time to work, or if I'm driving an hour there yeah. and an hour back, and then I have to work for the rest of yeah. the day, we're not going to make no money. Uh huh. And then for me, you know, I naturally wake up early anyway. So it's like, I wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I would wake up early in the morning, even when he was taking the kids to school. And my thing was, I'm up for no reason now. So like, I'm up, I do hair, I do breakfast, I do all the things, and then I'm just kind of sitting there. So now, like for me, it gives me purpose because I get to wake up, I do my own thing. I need routine. Creature like, of habit. I'm a creature of habit. I love how you just, you be right here in my brain. You be knowing where I'm at. No, I'm nice with um, it. He really is. You know, when we were having that conversation, he was just like, I know that this is a lot. Like, this is too much. And I was like, well. And I remember I let you speak because, like, I didn't agree, but I wanted to see where you went with it. By the time we ended the conversation, it was clear to me. I'm like, oh, this is a you feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I feel that way. Mm -hmm. Like, it is a lot, but it doesn't feel like it's too much. You know what I mean? And I, that was the first time that I noticed. Well, not the first time. that That's the first time where I put it together. I'm like, oh, you do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like you do internalize situations that might make you uncomfortable and you assume that I'll make that person feel the same way. Oh, yeah, no and, doubt. And this was the first time I was like, oh, I, I see that this is a pattern. So for me to say that that's accurate, it is accurate, but it's only recently that I noticed that it was a thing. Yeah. And I felt the light click on in your head when I said it. And sometimes for me, it's also predictive because our relationship is very cyclical. Like yeah. We've been going through the same 20 things cyclically for the last 10 years of yeah. knowing each other. Yeah. Only thing that changes like the variables. Yeah. We The we same issues we now. had yeah. with our apartments, the same issues we had with the house. Yeah. Like, it, money issues when we was broke same money issues doing I right, you know yeah. and for me I try to predict it sometimes because what's sustainable for two weeks I've seen it before it's not mm -hmm. sustainable for four months so it's it's trying to bridge the gap between guessing how you feel mm -hmm. and trying to get ahead of something that I know in the past has yeah. not been an issue in in the first month that we have to do it but as time goes along it becomes more of an issue and then we have to change everything. Because you don't mind changing, and I do. I don't think there's anything wrong with that mindset. I think that it only becomes a problem when you refuse to accept the other person's reality about the situation. 100%. You know what I mean? Because I think like even us having that conversation, it was really helpful for me because I got to see where you were at with it. Because mm -hmm. I kind of do the same thing. Like If something's not a big deal for me, I, I automatically assume it's not a big deal for you. And I think just in certain things in our relationship or with the kids or with the business, like we're not doing everything together like we used to. Like it was always 50 50 with Kira and I. If one person takes the kids to you school, you know, you somebody can't say 50 50 on the internet. Hey, it's a, it's a buzzword. <laughs> Somebody's ears just perked up and they about to internalize our whole conversation and regurgitate it he back to 50 us. 50. And it's not even what we're talking about. Real man never goes 50 /50. No, real shit. Let me not get, let me not get, get off topic. Hold on. Stop. <laughs> but yeah, we're so used to. Everything being equal, you know, equal responsibilities. Like if someone cooks, somebody washes the dishes. Mm -hmm. If someone drives in the morning, somebody else drives in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Somebody does breakfast, the other person handles dinner. And I think that worked for a really long time in our relationship, but that's just not the dynamics of our relationship it changed, anymore. Man. It makes, and, and this is where I remember you and I did butt heads. It was an area that we were clearly not on the same page with. When the conversation kind of came up and I was like, I don't think that you should do pick up or drop off anymore because, oh, sorry, I'm a little congested. It's allergy season. So if I sound a little bit different, that's why. But going back to what I was saying, you edit all day, you shoot all day, you think about content all day, you're on podcasts, you're on meetings, you're writing a book, you're doing a lot of things. What I noticed in the past couple of months is after you go back and drop off the kids, I'm kind of like looking for something to do. Mm. I'm trying to fill the time. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense to mm -hmm. me. It's not like, you know, I can edit, but I don't edit your stuff. You know what I mean? Like I can do things, but that's not my primary responsibility. If I'm up anyway, why not take that off of your plate? Even if it's 
well, my role is a lot more family and kids focus and your role is a lot more work focus. So what if it's not split down the middle as long as we're both getting what we need? Yeah. You need time and I need purpose. Yeah. And I feel like we found a way to make that work for now. And if we have to adjust again, we will because we have proof that if we ever have to adjust, we can adjust. Of course. And I think that goes back to what I just said. It's the difference between the way that you and I conceptualize adjustments and how we uh, deal with adjustments. Yeah. You are fine with it. Noemi can just, oh, Noemi rearranges rooms <laughs> all the time. Whatever position my room is in, if the bed and the desk are right there, that's kind of where it stays. I don't really, I got <laughs> issues with change like that, and and she doesn't. So for her, it's it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to assume. But in my mind for you, it's like, well, when we need to adjust, we'll just do that. In my mind, it's like, fuck, we're doing, adjusting again? Like, it took me forever to get used to this. Now I got to get used to something else. Yeah. Well, I... How long are we going to have to do this until I got to change once again? Yeah. And I, if you are listening to me and saying, duh, that's a part of adulthood, just that's probably because that's something you don't struggle with yeah. as hard. But allow me to observe your life uh -huh. for a day. Wait till he finds what you struggle and with. And I will find 200 <laughs> things that you struggle with mightily that are easy for me. Yeah. And I probably, you know, I, I wouldn't want you to feel undermined in that. So just try to be open in these conversations. No, I love that you said that because... I know that you struggle with adjustment and I was trying to figure out like how do if I can put an emotion to how like adjustments make me feel like it's not even like I'm good with adjustments it gives me a rush like I so love it's, it's not just that you don't mind them you I, love I them I like them I hate because it, like I I mean think about it I, I've moved so many times like, I haven't I switched, moved ever I have like if you just sit down and say no Amy tell me about all the careers that you've ever had they are not related at all like I've done it all Oh, that's crazy. I, I all mine all. are really related. All they all yours, fall in the same all lane. All of yours are community facing. Like yeah, helping people, people serving. Students. Yeah. 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 I've been a singer. I've been uh I've worked in recording studios. I've been in film. I've been a lawyer. I've been a teacher. And then even within teaching, I've taught babies. I've taught elementary school and I taught high school. Like I <laughs> Listen, I do all the things. I can play instruments. Like I, I don't play nothing. I think that change and doing something new is something that's exciting for me. So anytime I have a chance to do something new, to shake up my routine, to learn a new skill, to to figure out something new, like I genuinely enjoy that. And as a mom, my life is pretty redundant. You know what I you mean? You think like, so? Oh, yeah. yeah and as a married person, like real talk, marriage is kind of predictable. It is. But being married to a social media influencer is different than just being married to like, I don't want to say regular person because you're still regular, but you know what I mean? Like, like someone who is not an influencer. Someone who is not an influencer. Like nothing about our marriage seems redundant because sometimes our marriage is being on the red carpet somewhere in LA, <laughs> you know, talking about our marriage. Sometimes our marriage is, you know, being on a TV show, a nationally. I think I'm speaking I mean? more about the day to day. But that is our day. -to -day. We can get a call right now and say, yeah. You know, black love needs you to to be on the show, or like a couple of years ago, uh, Oprah wants to take your family on vacation. Yeah, like, yeah. somebody said something like, like I said, I'd be minding my business and I'd be at home, and they'd be like, "Well, if that's the case, then I'm reading you wrong because your life looks lit." <laughs> Because it is. It's a different thing every day. I don't know if you're going to be here. I don't know if you're going to be in New York. I don't know if you're going to be on live TV. I don't know if you're going to shoot a show. I don't know if you're going to be in a podcast with somebody that I love and admire. Or, you know what I mean? Like, our marriage is not the same every day. I don't even put that in a category with our marriage. That's just my job. But our job, your job is our real life. I, that's so You're different. You're not an I, actor. I compartmentalize like that differently from but it's you, also, I think. But it's also different because you are the person doing the things. Yeah. It's I'm, different when you're watching the yeah, person versus the person. I'm the observer the slash plus one. Plus, like, I'm the best friend sidekick that gets a ride. Like, I'm like, we. Nah, that's lit. I'm sitting there trying to go over my lines, making sure I don't stumble in front of 100,000 people. Knowing me, it's just like, ooh, what we wearing? Know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and it's like, it's, I think we just have two totally different experiences in our marriage because of the work that we do. Like, this is fun to me. I get to be on a podcast with my husband talking about my oh, relationship. Oh, no, this is fun. I enjoy yeah, this. This is everything. That's different. But this is, this is our check-in. This is our, like, couples therapy check-in. 
You know this what is else? our this is part of our marriage. You know what this what else this is? What? This is a very good way for you to not say yours because we've been going on long about mine. Okay. It's your turn. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, slip. So my thing is one thing that um I've been working on is um I don't know, I need to talk this through first. Go ahead. So one of the things that I realized that I used to do is I used to do too much. I used to overdo things. I would like overly accommodate it. Does that make sense? Keep going. Like I was overly accommodating, like I would like, Kira's not going to like this. So let me go ahead and do this or overly accommodating to you emotionally. Like if I felt like something would be overwhelming, I would go out of my way for you to not have to deal with that so that you would not be overwhelmed. Mm. And I realized, I don't remember when, but I realized at some point that I was just doing, I was too focused on you and your emotions and I had to fall back. And I'm like, he's a grown man with his own emotions and he has to learn to deal with them. My job can't be to overly think about all the things that could possibly happen because this is real life. I'm not, I'm not going to do this forever. Does that make sense? It does. You said he needs to learn to handle these. In your mind, do you feel like I was either incapable of no. handling my own emotions or I needed assistance with it? No, I don't. It's not that you needed assistance with it, but I just kind of looked at it as like, what's the point of having a partner if you don't have nobody to help you with the <laughs> that you can't see? Nah, that actually makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? And I think that it is helpful, but I think I got to a place where I saw myself doing that for everybody. Like, it wasn't just you. It was with the kids. And I wasn't um, applying the same care that I was to you and the kids to myself. When you say you do the most, what was my reaction when yeah, you would do that? I mean, you were grateful. It wasn't... It, so my my decision to, to fall back wasn't based on your reaction. I think your reaction was more like, if I did it, that was cool. If I didn't, it was cool. Mm -hmm. It showed me that like I didn't have to do all of that. You would be appreciative, but I didn't have to do that. And in my mind, it took a lot of effort for me to do that. So when I was doing it, it was just like, wow, like I'm kind of exhausted. I don't always want to do that. So when I, when I kind of pulled back and fell back, I realized that the response was the same. So I had created this need for me to do something when there wasn't a need at all. Ooh, that's a good one. I agree with yeah. you. I'll, I'll actually take it a step further. A lot of times when you would do that, it'll be a wrestling match because now in my mind, I'm like, well, okay, she wants to be useful. So I guess I'll, you know, kind of let her cover that because I am a hyper independent. Very much so. I don't so. need nobody in my mind. Strong, independent man. Don't, don't need nobody. nobody. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, we say that a lot. <laughs> but but what happens when you're like when you're that type of person is once you get in partnership with a person who enjoys being needed, even though I do not enjoy being needed, I can't identify with that at all. He's like, damn, I need to do something. Need all right, okay. fine. <laughs> and always like, yippity. But the difference is purpose. I said it before. You, you find purpose, purpose in it, and I feel exhausted by yeah. it. But it was also exhausting trying to make room for you to be that thing when that's yeah. not ever what I need from you. I know, and mm. I know that, yeah. and I know that. That's, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's really okay. good. Yeah, All right. Because I thought you'd be like, yeah, you did too much. Oh my God, my little heart. No, you you think you think that I think you do too much way more frequently than I actually do because you'll say something sometimes even on a sit down talk you'll be like you'll say something like no nah, because I do too much and, and one time I said no Amy why do you think you do too much because people tell me I do too much who tells you you, you do too much you did once <laughs> it was. You hey. know how sometimes you get into an argument with somebody and they like just that. say that one thing yep. and it's just like yep. and it, it yep. I know you now. Yep. Enough to know that it wasn't that deep then. But it sticked. But though. it was one of those things where I know my personality and in past relationships. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off real real quick. Someone made a comment from our last video about how they were really proud of us for for talking about past relationships because people like to get into marriages and relationships yeah, not knowing that people been in love before, yeah. been in other relationships before, had different situations with other people. And like, that's not a bad thing. You bring the things that you learn from those relationships into your current relationship and you learn from them and you grow from them and you move forward. Absolutely. Like we can't just forget about the past, the people that we were in love with before. They also shape your identity Hell in a very yeah. meaningful way. Hell yeah. But I've been in relationships before for where men told me that I did too much. And granted, looking back on them, I will say a lot of those times it was more of an attack versus like a, 
a sit down conversation. Oh, like the attack one, on your character. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was it was like a no shade, but it was like you're a bossy. And it's like for me, it's just like, but you don't want to take accountability for this. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like you had a responsibility, you didn't do it, and I had to do it. You calling me bossy, but I'm like, but you didn't do it. So somebody had to do it. So I internalized that. So when you would say, you know, you kind of doing too much, it took me back to those relationships. And I'm like, well, I ain't going to do nothing, <laughs> you know? And it, it was, it's an internal battle yeah. that I was kind of going through. And like, not just that, I've, I've heard it in relationships. I've heard it, you know, from my parents when I did stuff that they didn't want me to do. You know, it, it, it kind of took on its own kind of beast. And that one comment just brought me back. That was a, that's a tender spot for me. But I think like now that we're in this relationship where like I trust you, I can talk to you about anything. Like I can talk to you about my insecurities. You talk to me about your insecurities. Like it's a safer space to really kind of like dig deeper and try to figure out what the problem is there. And that's kind of where I was like, you know what? I don't have to move in the relationship with that in mind. I don't have to hang on to that comment because that comment isn't the same thing. It was just a fleeting moment. You didn't mean the same thing that they meant when they said similar things. No. And I think I had to learn how to separate that. And you still learn how to separate that. It's yeah. a mountain that you still climb it. And I see it. If, if I feel real talk, it's also the way that I talk to you. I, I changed it. It's a tone and it's an approach that makes you feel like you're not doing too. It's like, changed completely. Yeah. So what I'll say, if you're giving me a lot of information at once or you're being, I'm not going to say overly helpful because that sounds disrespectful. No, okay. But you But you, you're helping me. Y'all know what. Y'all know what. Yeah, you're means. helping me when I, I, I didn't ask yep. for it and I don't really need it in the moment. I say, babe, give me one second to figure this yep. out. Yep. Instead of being like, you're doing too much because yeah. it's, it's, it takes the focus off of her. It's not, you're doing too much. It's give me a second to figure this out. I bring the focus back to me. Can I give you your flowers real quick? It's called a classic overcorrection. Humans do it all the time. You get one person in a relationship to talk to you crazy. And once you, you decide that, hey, I don't like this. This ain't for me no more. And you step away from that relationship. What people do is called an overcorrection. So you'd be like, I ain't never going to let nobody talk to me crazy again. And you go past that and you become hyper aware sometimes. So if anybody says anything that you think is a little bit off, it registers to you, it's yep. them talking crazy. You see people all the time flying off the handle at other people. It's not that they're it's just these mm -hmm. super uh, aggressive attackers. It's just that in their mind, they're trying to be self-protective and yep. they're over practicing self-protection and whenever you over practice or you over correct you're going past the point of it being helpful for you now it's detrimental to you and your relationship you gonna give my flowers yeah I let was, me get them joints <laughs> i was waiting i was like he didn't hear me um you're i gotta hold my head high when i get my flowers no your ahead. flowers are you have mm -hmm. been speaking up. to me with so much grace lately not to say that you didn't before but you didn't like this I think I think you you showed your frustration with me <laughs> and my ways a little bit more before, like when we first started dating. And it's like now I feel seen and understood, but still checked with grace. You wouldn't say like, damn, babe, you're doing too much. It's more like, babe, I, I see where this is coming from. And I feel like you might be thinking this, but why don't we reframe it and think like this? And I really appreciate you for that because like we all have things that we have to work on and no one is a clearer mirror than the person that you in relationship with. You, they yeah. see it all. Yeah, man, that's the, I love they that reference. All. A mirror in a relationship yeah. is very similar. And then like we've, we've been, I mean, we haven't been together for 10 years, but we've kind of been like relationship with each other. We've known, we've each, known other. each other for 10 years, but like we've known each other really well. When we got to know each other. We got to know each other pretty fast mm -hmm. once we, once we opened that door. But you know, to know someone and to know their mannerisms for the past 10 years and to see the people that they talk about. Like, he knows my mom. He has a relationship with my mom. So when I reference stories, he can see it because he knows her personality. He knows my dad. He knows my family. He knows my friends. So it's like, it's different when you have somebody that understands the nuances of your personality and your life giving you constructive criticism versus somebody who just met you. And it's human nature to tie things to what feels familiar to you. So so you might not be giving me advice based on what you know about me. You're giving me advice based on what sounds familiar, what you know about other people. And you're taking those experiences and bringing them in. Ooh. I just feel like the advice just feels, the advice, the guidance, and just the words, it comes with just knowing me a lot better. 
That's the key. That's the key. Knowing somebody better. What helped me a lot is seeing couples in therapy and seeing their disconnect. I want to be a fly on the wall in like a couples therapy session. I wish. Not I, one on TV because I feel like those, the ones on TV be kind of crazy. Uh, just, which one? Like couples therapy? Like yeah. that show? Nah, that's average. Those gonna, are supremely lightweight. I'm going to go off topic for a bit. Like all I know is that and us. Where do we kind of stand? Like, can you take a step back and compared tell me, to other yeah. people? People is that like bad? I'm, to I'm gonna take therapist brain off because I'm gonna be a little judgmental. Okay. I think that people have ridiculous expectations of other people, comparative to where those people are in their lives. What's funny is what you think the husbands will have issues with and the wives. It's inverse so frequently. Really? There's so many husbands that think their wives are slobs. Really? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they can't go online and say that. Well, a lot of men probably wouldn't. Yeah. Because other men wouldn't respect you. Yeah, if I was you... just saying it based on like what we see on social media. That's, yeah. How it's so different. Because I couldn't imagine a man saying like, my, my wife is a slob. Because I'd be like, is she a mother? Yeah. Like, is she? <laughs> that's my natural reaction. But that's a lot of people. There, there are gender-based expectations yeah. on us already that yeah. you determine before anyone ever says yeah. a word. <laughs> what I didn't that was that hit me hard I didn't, yeah, I, yeah, I, I've yeah never yeah. I've never even considered that that would be something that would come up in a couple's therapy session I think that we are more considerate of one another than a lot of people mm-hmm. I think that we're able to put our personal differences to the side for a common goal I think a lot of people struggle with that I think a lot of people struggle with not being mean and nasty and spiteful and petty when they're upset. All of those things are beautifully human, but they f up your relationship yeah. in 30 different ways. It's not that people can't see it, it's just that the human brain will justify almost anything if it's angry enough. If it feels slighted, if it feels like it's being treated unfairly or unjustly, people will, they'll do whatever they need to do, jump through whatever mental gymnastics they have to in order to justify whatever their reaction is. Um, and then they go to their various communities. You go back to your boys and be like, yeah, man, she messed up. You go back to your girls. Girl, you deserve better. And they yeah. just validate whatever half-chewed information you offer them up. It's funny, man. It's it's so funny watching people move and then the way they present in real life and their social media. It's like, this ain't, I don't know, man. Something feels askew. Yeah. Can it I happens. ask you a question? Yeah. So going back to the flowers that I gave you about the grace thing. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that like that's the missing key in a lot of like the tension in relationships, especially when it comes to stuff like that. What, like, are you just naturally able to give me grace? Like, how are you there? Because I don't think you do that for everybody. No, but your family. Like, so because we're like, it was a choice. It was a. It's a choice to do it. Yeah, I actually like you as a person. I like this marriage. I like our situation. And I want to be fair. That's what fairness looks like to me. Don't get me wrong. Like, we ain't that special. There's several couples out there that are functional, that have great communication, that vibe and bounce. Everybody's not in a terrible marriage. Like, that's just not true. But I think it's a mix of everything. I think it's me becoming a therapist. I think it's me kind of navigating my bad relationship with fatherhood. I think it's me navigating this bad relationship with marriage because I would have took you without the marriage. But that's that don't make sense in anybody else's mind but mine. (laughs) And I committed to this joint. Like, I want to give it a fair shot. You treat me very well. I feel like you treat me with grace. And we got another episode coming out. Damn, we really going off topic. We might not get these three off, baby. Let's just do one more then. I bet. But we'll make an episode out of this. But when Noemi was pregnant, I remember this woman was seven months pregnant, walked up to me and said, babe, what can I do to better support you? (laughs) What? You were pregnant and you were scared, but you were still a partner. You never stopped being a partner. Yeah. You never blamed me for things that I couldn't control that were going on with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You never did that. Because I saw partnership growing up. You know my parents divorced. Nobody thought my parents would get divorced when they did. That's a whole nother conversation. But they showed me what true partnership looked like. Yeah. I, like yeah. And without the gender expectations. Like my yeah. dad stayed at home and my yeah. mom worked not because he couldn't find a job or you no know, whatever. It worked better for their hours. Yeah. Even to this day, as as a divorce. They couple, still they still people, nice with it. Yeah, they, they just their partnership skills are A1, and that was my baseline. 
So I know that if I wanted my kids to see what I saw growing up, like it wasn't even a question. Man, I'll tell you, man, we really going off the hinges. <laughs> but one thing that helps, that helped in our relationship is your relationship with your dad. I've never dated a woman that had that great of a relationship with her father. I've also never dated a woman that had that great of a relationship with her mother. Yeah, I love and, my parents. They get on my nerves, but I love y'all. But I think your dad being an example for you like that, you just didn't come into this relationship with preconceived notions of what a man is, oh. what a man does, and what a man is supposed to be. I did, though. You, I did. You did, but they weren't in the light of negativity. No, they weren't. They, were not. they weren't rooted in hurt. They no. weren't rooted in abandonment, and that, in my dating experience, is tremendously rare. Very rare. So, I feel like you came in with a set of tools that made me feel like, oh, okay, maybe I need to approach this a little bit different. Our relationship hasn't always been like that. No. And I don't know if I always felt like I needed to do all of this, but where we are now feels worth it. We've built this yeah. thing, and it's, it's floating, it's doing good. That's my contribution. I feel like that's the least I can do. Yeah. But I understand why that's hard for some people. I also grew up in a house with a mother who gave me hugs and kisses and love, and we had conversation. I never felt alienated in my own house. I never felt like it wasn't okay to cry or express emotion. We talked about culture. We talked about everything. you know. And I feel like that diversity from her gave me a level of flexibility that I don't see in a lot of men that I know. An emotional bandwidth that... You know, I don't know if you can get if you get your ass whooped every night. True. If you're a six-year-old boy and you get your ass whooped because you peed in the bed. I don't know if you always grow to have those faculties at that level of strength. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't just credit me, man. I was raised by my mom and my grandma. They were incredible. And they, yeah, I, I think they helped me out a lot. Man, shout out to them. God rest their souls. Yeah. What's my other joint? I think I mentioned this before in another sit-down talk, but I still struggle with it. So, let's giddy up. I think one thing that I can do, it's kind of surface level in my mind, but it bothers me a lot when I do it, is in the vein of thinking for you, sometimes when you're talking, I might complete your sentence because <laughs> I think I know what you're saying, and then that ain't what you're saying. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it seems very surface level, but I do think that there's something in sitting and listening to a person talk and not interjecting, which I have a hard time with. Kev on stage made me feel comfortable admitting that I'm going to interrupt you a lot. Kev, Kev will tell you. like yeah. He'll be like, I'm going to interrupt you a lot, and I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to do it. He said that to me one time, and I, I was like, oh. Was this? I don't remember. Who I knows? remember that conversation. And I was like, oh, that makes... I feel validated, oddly. No, it's fine. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and cook, sir. But I know that I do that with you, mm -hmm. and... I want to do that less because I think it does trickle to other things. Yeah. And I think it does play into me having like me trying to predict a fortune tale and guess what you're saying instead yeah. of just sitting and listening and observing. It bothers me when I do that, but I can't stop. You know what's so funny? I do think that you do that, but it's never bothered me. There you go. It's never bothered me. Set me free. I'm doing it's it all not, the time now. I'm about to let the chopper because, fly. But, and what do you do when you say, I let you finish? I always let him finish, and I'll be like, yeah, but that's not where I was going with it. Like, I don't mind you saying that, because it also lets me know where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe that goes back yeah. to the grace thing. Like, Because yeah. if anybody else does it, I'm going to tell you now, don't do that shit. It's going to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just something, I don't know. It's like, you give grace, so it makes it, makes it easy for me to give you grace. I don't know if I cut you off, but like, I, you don't really talk about your feelings as often as you think you do because you make a living talking about feelings yeah so most of the time talking when about feelings he talks have to me to. in shorthand even if like i feel like that's not where i'm at and you finish it i like i just like to hear where you are because you don't often share where you are emotionally and i understand it's because it's exhausting could you imagine your your job is to talk about feelings all day and it's like it's not even monotonous. You talk about feelings in your IG reels. You talk about your feelings on TikTok. You talk your feelings on the podcast. Then you do a speaking engagement. Like, I, listen. It's a, it's a lot of talking about the We have one emotional feels. conversation for the night. The next morning, I'm done. I am done. I <laughs> yeah, can't. it's a lot. I want to talk it's about feelings for fun, not for work. So, honestly, it's not something that bothered me at all. I know that you do it. You've never stopped doing it. <laughs> so, I, don't, I mean, I don't mind. Because you, you're you also flexible enough to be like, if I tell you that's not where I'm at, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And that's it. Because it's not about the pride of being right or the ego of figuring this thing out. It's just about, I think a part of me kind of, am I trying to move the conversation along? 
Because you're more long-winded than I am. Yeah, because I don't talk for a living, so this is my chance to get it all out. <laughs> nah, nah, babe, naturally, you're just more long-winded than oh, me. Yeah. I like to talk. I enjoy it. I don't. I don't. Like, I mean, I like, surprise, like this, surprise. but I just think people talk too much. I think people fill words with space, and I, because my face be on screens and people know me from other places, yeah. they, be, they just be trying to make conversation that... That ain't interesting. Like, you can just say, hey, what's up, bro? And keep it moving. But people try to force this. Yeah. yeah, I don't. But I learned that from you. Yeah. If I'm not interested in the conversation, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it short. I don't, if I don't have a lot to say, I don't have a lot to say. Yeah. I don't feel the need to force it. People talk too much, man. It's just too hey, many we're words. Not doing this. We're not complaining about people talking about us. And then they take <laughs> too long to get to the point. And, and most of the time, there is no point. Oh it's my. just people wanting to hear themselves speak. I'm, I almost and this walked is, away from the table, and this is, dog. This is something I about... I so much, man. <laughs> this, this is a perfect like segue to what I was going to say. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to get here. And I think oh, this I'm your better second at joint? that. Yeah. Let's go. I think I'm better at that. And, and it's not just a you thing. I think I'm better at it with you. All right. But I'm realizing it's a thing with people. Give like, it to me. I'm so over people saying a whole bunch of but not say anything. Get to the point. Yeah, because the How? the transparative properties of not the super even, infringible, not like that, that type. Of not even that, but it's just like you have a problem. Tell me what the problem is. You're so worried about my, my response to the problem. What words you're gonna use? Like I can tell, and this is not just a you thing, but it's like I can tell when people want to tell me something and they're talking around the subject. Oh, you hate that. And you hate that. The petty part of me is like now I'm gonna make you uncomfortable. Like I said, I don't know that I did it with you because if I did, it was it wasn't long. This is definitely something that I've oh, kind of learned. Oh, you have got better at that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You got a story? I'm trying to I'm trying Man, to give them an example because we know what we're talking about, but I one I'm time, not saying it right. Me and Noemi oh, were God. on a panel together. First time we ever did a panel together. I've done a million speaking events. I think this was one of her first ones. And a woman in the audience asked me a very gender loaded question. And I think that I was trying to process how I wanted to answer it and what I wanted to say. And she gets on the mic and says, yeah, you're talking around it. You're not saying what needs to be said. So I'm just going to say it. And I'm like, ah, and I think we got off my house like, babe, don't do that yeah, no more. I remember. Like I, that's bad speaker etiquette. I, I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> because, like, yo. Okay, let me just be a hundred percent honest. I don't remember what the hell I said but I do remember the way that I made him feel. And any time that we have like a live event, I'm on pins and needles. Like, nah, don't, don't be. No, 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 up, no, 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 I know. No, no. I know it's in Don't be thing. on pins and needles. I know, yeah. I know it's in my head, but. It was not that deep but to that, me. But that was the first time that like anyone had told me that I had done something. And I was like, oh, I, yeah, yeah, girl. You did that. <laughs> but you know what, though? I I understand that. I think the cool part to me is that you don't trip. You just like, oh, my bad. Yeah. You don't go into justifying why and making excuses and dancing. You don't do all that. You're like, oh, babe, my bad. Yeah. I didn't realize I did that. It's yeah. never a thing after that. It's, it's the acknowledgement. It, I don't even need the apology. Just the acknowledgement. I didn't realize I did that. I don't even need an apology. Mm -hmm. The acknowledgement is enough for me. And you yeah. did that. Yeah. So it's it's cool. And you ain't know. But that's like being in a rap cipher and somebody going, uh, uh, and they about to rap and then you just start rapping. <laughs> like, yo, what you doing, bro? That ain't how I, it go. I understand the rules of the game. <laughs> and I, like he said, it was, it was oh, my first. Man. Like, I'm not, I love to speak. I think I'm a great speaker, but I'm not a professional speaker. I think that there are nuances and just things that you pick up from doing these things often that Kier has. I was a rookie on the mic, you know yeah. what I mean? I know, I got excited. And, you you know. answered the question, but you did get straight to the yeah. point, though. Yeah, yeah. You, you said the thing that I was dancing around for sure. But where I was going to say that I've been working on is just because I don't like to hear the fluff, doesn't mean that that person doesn't need the fluff for them to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, how I used to look at things is like, if you're going to tell me something about myself, tell me. I prioritize myself and my feelings in the situation. Not And just because it's not hard for me to give constructive criticism doesn't mean it's not hard for other people to do it. Mm -hmm. So the same way that like... You I, said that earlier. You mentioned that. You said that's, a, that's something you struggle with. Yeah, you think yeah. it's easy for you. You think it's easy for everybody. Yeah. A lot of people struggle with that. I, I just think I'm more aware of people and their stuff now. And like before I kind of thought of it like, 
it's your stuff. It's your responsibility. I don't. I don't know, gaf. You know what I mean? Like, I don't it, gaff, huh? and it's and it's was it fake? You know how some people, some people say that they don't care, but they're playing it. I genuinely do not care. Like when people say they're unbothered, and they're the most bothered person that every. If you Nothing ever say you're unbothered, <laughs> I don't believe you. But I am. <laughs> Ask oh, any I, of my friends nah, who I, know I, me in real life. But that's you don't. But you don't have. say you're unbothered. You don't use those words. No. But if but, you use those words in my mind, yeah, you're supremely bothered. I usually say I'm not tripping. I'm never tripping. Nah. Ask ask any of my closest friends, like who know me for real. That's the one thing that they're most annoyed by me. Yeah. It's like no way, me. Like you don't trip. Like I, she ain't listen, tripping. it's so listen. I gotta feed my kids dinner. Like I, I don't, I don't care. I got bigger things. I gotta pay these bills. These bills. I gotta, I gotta figure out spring break. Spring break. Summer camp. Summer, like, girl, I don't camp. care. Why is summer camp so expensive, is dog? It something I can pay away. You mad? You want me to get you dinner, girl? Go do what you gotta do. And I just think that like I've gotten better at like holding space for my friends. And also you whose personality isn't like that. Like I've learned that even with Kier sometimes like that gentle approach is still aggressive sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm used to hearing that because my mom is like that. My dad is even like that sometimes. But it's just like adjusting to the person that you're talking to, like their emotional comfort. If you care about them, I think that it's worth considering. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm way more considerate now than I've ever been. And as we land this plane, I hope that if you're a person who's struggling to be considerate in that regard, you get a chance to practice it in other relationships in your life that aren't your romantic relationships so that you can build that muscle. Because it's not something that everybody's born with. Everyone doesn't have the parents who have yeah. um, who've modeled that for them or family or community who's shown them that this is a way that you can act. Most people, it just doesn't register in their mind that way. So shout out to you if you're one of those people who can actually grow the capacity to do that and be there for the folks who you love so dearly. In the comment section below, I want you to tell us, like, is is this, are any of these things we talked about, are they something that you struggle with? Yeah. Are there something you struggle with in the past? Are there something that somebody that you loved in the past or currently love struggle with? Write it down. Tell us what you've done to see that through. How have y'all got better at that? Where have you noticed that there have been improvements? Because in the comment section, some of y'all leaving some amazing yes comments yeah. that i read and i take something away from so never undermine how much your light may light somebody else oh i love that i used to say kindle how your light can kindle somebody else when i'm trying to switch it up for the nine nine and the two thousand <laughs> uh are we done i mean yeah yeah like, I, I don't think we got nothing else to discuss can i at least end it with this yeah go ahead um I'm really glad we did this. Yeah, I thought it was I'm a good really exercise. I'm really glad we did this. A lot of times when Kira and I have like ideas for the sit down talk, we usually kind of talk about it in advance or we we kind of we try to get each other's kind of feelings on things, but I really wanted us to do this challenge. What do you want to call it? A challenge? Sure, let's call it. I really wanted this challenge to be as authentic as possible because like this is needed in any kind of relationship, even friendships. Like yeah. this this check-in is, Ooh, is necessary. Definitely friendships. Absolutely. Oh, I think I think you should do it with your friends yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> practice I think with your friends. Practice with your friend. Practice with a friend that you know, love, and trust. Yeah. That's gonna be it for us today. I think we kind of wrap this up. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Also make sure that you hit the notification button so you can know of all of our posts as soon as they post. Remember, we're streaming on every platform. Everyone. Tell a friend. Shoot them a sit-down talk. Something here is valuable to somebody, so go ahead and send that. But we will catch y'all. Hey, look at us with consistency, I huh? I know. Hey. <laughs> we catch y'all on the flip side. Y'all be well. Peace. <laughs>